Good morning. I'm David Adams uh, from the Board of Trustees of the Monta Vista UU Congregation, uh, welcoming everyone who's here in the sanctuary and joining us um, virtually. Uh, just three short, three short uh, messages before uh, we uh, begin our service. Um, first, as part of uh, rethinking our um, organizational structure, committee structure, um, many of us have attended one of several um, focus group discussions. So the last of those focus group discussions is scheduled for a week from today, March 26th, uh, here at noon, uh, and I think over uh, Zoom. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to participate, I would certainly encourage you to do so. Um, share your thoughts and ideas. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, important and your input is, is valuable and valued. Um, second, uh, the leadership development team would very much like to talk with you if you are interested in or curious about uh, serving on uh, either the RE Council or the board, um, the board of trustees um, starting in July. Um, so who should they see for that? Megan, I think May, either Megan, Amy, or uh, Mayor Baldena, I think, uh, uh, if you're interested. Uh, and then lastly, today marks the kickoff for our annual pledge drive. Um, you don't need me to tell you, but I guess I'll tell you anyway, that uh, pledging is really vital and important to the well-being of our, of our congregation. Um, Pledge cards are here, and you will uh, learn more about this uh, shortly from our uh, treasurer, Carissa, uh, Carissa Moore. Okay, thank you. Good morning, and welcome to everyone. We have 12 connections, the, um, three or four of them are probably in this room, but I think my husband George is at home today with our little Sophie, but I welcome all of you here today. It is good to be together. We open our service with the ringing of the bowl. We sound the bowl three times in honor, in, with our honor for women's history, once for those who came before, for all of the cherished women in our histories, mothers, sisters, friends, and neighbors. Once for those of us here and now, for the maidens, the mothers, and the crones among us, creating balance and bringing peace. And once for those who will come, for the community that we are building to hold these stories yet unheard that are different from our own. And in their hearing, may we come to know ourselves changed, renewed where we are dry, hopeful where we're lost, and open where we have too long been closed. And as the vernal equinox arrives here in the Northern Hemisphere tomorrow at 2.24 p.m., we mark the arrival of spring. We celebrate 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way, does it? <laughs> but we'll hold that, right? We're happy that winter will soon be behind us and we turn our hope toward the coming of warmer, brighter days. I invite you to stand now as our bodies allow and we'll sing out that celebration as we lift up our opening song. <laughs> Perfect ending. And I have a text apology from Jarius, who's in that room right there. He texted me and said, Sorry about the lyrics for that song. So we did well. It sounded really great. Sorry for the folks at home that may not have had the words for that. Maybe they know it by heart. I'd like to invite Ann Taves to come and light our chalice this morning. And we light our chalice with these words that are inspired by Sarah Lammert. The element of fire represents passion, authenticity, and vitality. If the chalice is the supporting structure of Unitarian Universalism, then we are the flame. We are the flame fanned strong by our passion for freedom, our yearning for truth telling, our daring to be authentic with one another, and the vitality that we keep sustained by our meeting together. In all of this, there is love. 
May the lighting of this flame shine the light of our belonging to this community of love and justice on this morning and every morning. I invite you now to look in your order of service, and maybe Jarius will have this slide prepared. It's um, a new not a new covenant, but a new wording of the covenant that we have been reading every week. It's a combination of two that are both very meaningful for everyone. So I hope you'll follow along with these words. Jarius has got them up there. That's not the right one, Jarius. <laughs> we have a new one. It's similar, but can you take that down, Jarius, so no one is confused by that? Read the one in here with me, extra loud for the folks on Zoom. We affirm that love is the greatest purpose of this congregation. The search for truth is our constant star, and service is our prayer. We pledge our hearts, minds, and hands to challenge injustice with courage, to find hope in times of fear, and to live out our Unitarian Universalist values every day as beloved community. Thus do we covenant with each other and all that is sacred in life. And now we sing together our weekly invocational hymn, Spirit of Life. I invite you to stand as, you, as you're comfortable. I'd like to invite Robert Tidwell up for our wisdom tale for today. The title of it is Give Yourself. It's a story about Ralph Waldo Emerson. Good morning, everybody. What do you want for your birthday? The father asked his daughter. Do you want a doll? She wrinkled her nose and scrunched her eyes and thought, no. A tea set? A pony? No, father, I have a year to think. I want this year to be a special year, one to remember. All right, you think and let me know. Ellen thought, she thought of uh, bonbons and chocolates, new dresses, hats, kid boots, books, gloves, and lace collars, but none of these things were things that she wanted. What would be special? Each day, her father asked her, Ellen, do you want, do you know what you want for your birthday yet? And Ellen would shake her head, no father, I'm still thinking. One day, her father said, Ellen, are you finished thinking yet? Ellen said, yes, father, I've decided, I have a riddle. It will tell you what gift I want for my birthday. The riddle is this. You cannot buy it, for it is worth all the money you have, but only you can give it. Hmm, father said. I need to repeat this riddle, because it will tell me what gift you want for your birthday. 
I cannot buy it because it is worth all the money I have, but only I can give it. Is that right? Yes, father. Well, now it is my turn to think about your riddle. I have to find the perfect present in the mystery. Her father paced and pondered. He repeated the riddle over and over. I cannot buy it, but only I can give it. He paced and pondered. Finally, he said, I know what it is. I know what it is. Now he had to think about it, how to give it. When Ellen's birthday came, there was no present from her father. She didn't expect one. After she had opened the presents from her brother and sister, from her mother and grandmother, and after the cake was all gone and the celebration was over, Ellen's father, um, Ellen's father said, It is now time for Ellen's present from me. Ellen, come and sit with me. So Ellen climbed into the armchair and sat on her father's lap. My present to you is very special. I hope it is what you wanted, for it is not a book or a toy or clothes, but instead it is a present that is for all seasons and for each day. This year, your present from me is that we will spend time together every week, just the two of us. For you are my very special daughter, and I love you dearly. Ellen hugged him. Oh, father, I knew you would figure out the riddle. Her father said, you cannot buy it, for it is worth all the money that you have, but only you can give it. It took me a long time to figure out the answer, but when I did, I knew what gift you wanted. The answer was simple. Give yourself. Oh, yes, that is it. Time together with you will make this year the very best year of my life. Ellen looked, at her, fa looked her father in the eyes and asked, Oh, father, are you crying? Yes, you teach me more than any book I've ever read or written. By giving you time, I will gain more than I give. Now it is Ellen's turn to figure out this riddle. She wondered how could her father, by spending time with her, get more than he gave. She thought she understood because she knew love multiplies, but perhaps she would only understand when she was older, when she had children of her own. But her father understood, and when Emerson wrote an essay on giving, he wrote, Give Yourself, for he knew the wonder of this gift. And now, if the children present can come up and get the chalice, you guys can sing us to our class. a super important moment in our church life, time with our treasurer. I'd like to invite Carissa Moore up to speak with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So welcome to the 2023 Pledge Drive kickoff. Next slide, please. So, little background, where our money goes. I feel like I'm too close to this microphone. Oh, it goes to maintenance, goes to utilities, which as we all know, have all increased this year. General and administrative expenses, the UUA annual program fund, worship and music. So it pays for all of our um, guest speakers, uh, the music that our choir sings, Pays for Lily. <laughs> it, it pays for RE, which we all enjoy. It pays for some of our committees, like hospitality and membership, you know, the people that buy our coffee. We like that. It pays for social justice to send the boxes to our Calpion partnership every year. It pays for our staff, the wonderful people that keep our office running. And it pays for our wonderful minister. Yay. On the anniversary <laughs> of, of, her, of her very, very wonderful installation. Yeah. We are so very happy to have her here. <laughs> so, next slide. Where our money comes from. 
pledges. That's the big one. You know, we get money from Montessori. We get money from the tower rental, uh, from event rentals. From a, we get a little bit from the Sunday plate, and we get a little bit from the UU endowment interest. But most of it is pledges. That's the big, that's the big piece of the pie. All right, next slide, please. So with that, we are kicking off our 2023 pledge drive with the slogan, rocking MVUUC with strength, support, and sustainability. Now the dates to remember, we start today, March 19th, and we go through April 30th. And the pledge committee has a lot of fun and creative activities planned for y'all. So hopefully y'all will take part in those. And we have mascots. We have mascots. We have Rocky the squirrel, and we have Lucky the moose. And they are sitting on the table back there by the name tags. And you will get to see them when you turn in your pledge cards. Next slide, please. We got too far. It should be why it is important to pledge. There it is. OK. So your pledge supports our congregation. It pays for all of those wonderful things I listed earlier. Your pledge card also helps keep your membership current. So when you joined, you had to sign the book, take the class, fill out the pledge card. In order to keep that membership current, you got to fill out that pledge card every year. That's what allows you to vote in the congregational meetings. That's what allows you to hold committee assignments and board of trustee assignments. So that's very, very important. And if over 50% of our income comes from our pledges, we pay less in property taxes, which is always important. <laughs> All right, next slide. Okay. So where can you, I get a pledge card? You can get one in the sanctuary. Maribel and Kay are coming around right now and passing out these lovely green forms that are our current pledge card and membership renewal forms. So you can fill them out today and turn them in and then you're done. If you're not here today, then you can get one sent to you in the mail or you can go online. We have a fillable form and a printable form. Okay, next slide. So this is, this is our website. And if you click either of the buttons that say stewardship, there's one down here right above the donate button, and then there's one up on the top bar. If you click either one of those, it will give you three options. How to give, make your financial pledge to MVUUC, donate here, or donate your vehicle. You click that second one, and uh, I think we skipped one somewhere, Darius. Um, there should be another one. Nope. There. Okay, there it is. Okay. So that one, that is what that is the page it takes you to. And that is where you will find the links for the pledge forms. Under where it says make your pledge today, it's kind of in the teal in the middle of the page. It says submit your pledge online here. When you click that link, it will take you to the online pledge form. There it is. And then you can just type in all your information, hit submit, you're good. Or if you would rather print it out and 
handwrite it. There is a printable form that was further down that page. And there you go. And that is all of the ways you can submit your current pledge card for MVUUC. I've got mine. I will be submitting it. Everybody who submits their pledge card today in the sanctuary will get to pick out a rock for an art project we are doing. They will also get a Rocky Road candy bar. Everybody who submits their pledge card by April 30th will be entered into a raffle to be able to take home our mascot, Lucky. So, hope to see those pledge cards. And if any of you have any questions, like if you don't remember what you pledged last year, feel free to ask me. I have the list, I know. I'm the only one in this room right now that is allowed to know, so. And with that, I will turn it over to our lovely Kay Perlman. Good morning. Um, often when people become members of our con congregation, they're asked to say something about themselves. Well, I never, I actually never had that opportunity. I've have given a lot of speeches. So today, um, even though I've been a member for almost 35 years, some of you joined in the past few years and don't know much about me, so I'm going to give a very brief synopsis. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> actually, I've been a Unitarian since I was 14. <laughs> but um, I didn't feel that I could relate very well to my Jewish heritage, and my mother reluctantly let me go to the Unitarian Church with a family friend, and um, <clears throat> whose daughter was also a friend of mine. And I did that, and I, the, theologically I felt more comfortable, but my parents never joined. They never even came to services with me. The only way I had to get there was to go with my friend's family. And um, I did that for a while. After a while, I got my driver's license. I was able to go occasionally. But I still felt that sense of not belonging. So when I was in my early 20s, I basically had no theological home for almost two decades. And <clears throat> shortly after, that, I went to college, got my degree, and um, then got my master's in library science at USC and worked at the Ontario Library for almost 30 years. And then after that, I worked for 16 years as a children's librarian for the Duarte branch of the LA County Library System until I retired in 2015. Um, but one thing that is very, <coughs> excuse me, that most of you know, but not everybody knows, is that my uniqueness is that I am an adoptive parent, a single adoptive parent of two daughters. Um, <clears throat> my daughter Karen was born in 1982 in Taiwan, and my daughter Sarah was born in India in 1987. And I got them both when they were infants. Um, for the first several years, I didn't really have any religious education um, for them, I, I thought about it a lot and never did anything until, surprisingly, my mother joined the Unitarian Church here. And <laughs> um, so on Mother's Day of 1988, we attended what you, they used to have a um, pancake breakfast put on by the men's club. And we attended that, and I remember that all the mothers in the congregation were given flowers, and I was very touched by that. Our minister then was our esteemed Ellen Livingston, who my mother took a great liking to. And she also um, was telling me how wonderful the children's RE program was. 
By that time, my daughter Karen was already six, and so she was able to take advantage of that. Sarah was just a baby. She wasn't even a year old, so it took a while before she could do that. But anyway, um, and so that was the start of my journey here at the Unitarian Universalist Church. By the end of 19, by the, well, within a year, I had already become a member, and both of my children were dedicated to the church. So during my daughter's childhood and through their high school years, which was about 1989 to 2005, I enjoyed being actively involved in all kinds of RE activities. I taught numerous classes for various age levels and collected lots of t-shirts. <laughs> they used to give the teachers Unitarian Universalist t-shirts as a, a small gift for teaching the classes. Um, I was on the RE Council, and I also uh, served a two-year term as chair. I chaperoned several field trips, participating in numerous picnics, Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, Secret Palace, coming of age, and lots of other family activities, as well as occasionally attending a few adult events when I could. Um, and by retaining my membership and being actively involved as a family, I truly felt that I was able to give my children a sense of belonging to a religious community um, during their childhood through the coming of age ceremony. And occasionally, even after that, they, when they were in high school, they would still come to church once in a while. But like so often, um, many of you probably have gone through this yourselves, once they get out of high school, they don't want to be religious at all and belong to any religious community. And my children were the same way, but um, if I'd ask them to come to a certain event, they they have been doing that. For, well, Sarah lives in Washington now, so not very often, but Karen has come a few times. Well, in 2005, Sarah graduated from high school, and at the same time, Ellen retired. And so, and with our congregation then had a couple of interim ministers. And during that time, I kept my pledge up, but I kind of took a break from coming to church um, for, well, I had, for various reasons. And at one time, I actually decided that I should be a friend instead of a member. And I never heard the end of it. Somebody on the, uh, I forgot who it was, was teasing me about that. So I went back to being a member for, after that. Okay. Um, then when Anne Trent came, I believe it was in 2007, I made a partial comeback. I wasn't able to come to the Sunday morning services very often because I had made a commitment to a friend. I was helping her get her master's degree and helping her with things that she wasn't able to do herself. So, um, but I did come to a lot of the other activities afterwards. Well, then when I retired, in 2015, one of the first things I did was to become an active member again of the MVUUC. And it gave me an opportunity to socialize with like-minded people on a regular basis. But this time I was no longer focused on RE, but on adult activities, especially for those um, aimed at seniors or including seniors. Not only did I again begin attending church more regularly, I made a point to become involved in some of the activities that I yearned for, but found it difficult to attend when my children were young. One of those things was our annual congregational week spent at Devenable Pines, which I had never gone to. I went once. <laughs> and I was able to get to know some of our congregants and then the fresh mountain spring air, and not to be mentioned the various activities that were offered. Um, and of course, I took a lot of pictures. Some of you know me only for taking pictures, so. <laughs> anyway, um, I also participated in several of the small group dinners which were hosted by various congregants in their homes. And I was very sad when the interest kind of died um, for doing that, and we haven't done it for several years now. Um, I also attended several annual dinners and good and services auctions, as well as some of the trips that were auctioned off. And I enjoyed the auction so much that in 2018, I asked to be part of the auction committee. 
And as such, I was able to get donations from over 25 local businesses, earning a significant amount of money for our congregation. Not long after the last auction, I was able to help earn money for Lily's beautiful piano <laughs> uh, by donating, a, donating an iPad at and, um, as an auction, I mean, as a raffle item. And the tickets were $5 each, and many congregants um, took advantage of that. And, you know, we earned money that way, too. Um, one thing that I really wanted to do over the years and never had a chance because my kids always wanted to spend Thanksgiving at home or Karen and I went up to Seattle, up to Washington once, once Sarah moved up there. Well, in 2018 and 19, my girls were both in Washington and so I finally was able to enjoy the Thanksgiving dinner with the congregation. This year, I stayed home again, <laughs> but anyway. Um, but then COVID hit and everything changed. About a year ago, while I was looking for pictures of congregational events over the years, um, both for MVUUC's 70th birthday party and for my own 80th birthday party, I ran across a church membership directory from 1987. <laughs> How many of you were around at that time? You were, yeah, you were, okay, a couple of people. All right, <laughs> um, which was the most current, uh, the most current directory at that time, <clears throat> and not only did I enjoy looking through it to see if I recognized anybody, but it reminded me that I have been a member of MVUUC for nearly half of its 70-year existence. That seemed especially fitting that this year. I was asked to co-chair the annual pledge drive, and when Reverend Maggie mentioned having someone speak about the value of being a pledging member, I eagerly volunteered. After 35 years, I definitely had a lot to say. Um, one more thing I want to mention, though, <coughs> about being a member is that maybe you don't, maybe some of you don't know it, but membership actually has some pretty good perks. And um, I was able to take advantage of one of my favorite perks is that um, as a member, if um, we can occasionally, on certain occasions, use the sanctuary for our personal things um, for very little cost to ourselves. And I was able to host two of my own birthday parties when I turned 50 and then last year when I turned 80. Um, I was able to have a really nice party. Some of you attended my 80th birthday party. And by the way, I also brought a book that was made from the timeline. Um, and my neighbor updated it for me, gave it to me for Christmas. And there are some pictures of the party in there too. So I brought it if anybody wanted to look at it. Um, so there are a lot of advantages to being a member, um, aside from just you know, the ones, the, the monetary ones. Oh, um, you know, they, you can also do things that you wouldn't be able to do if you weren't a member. The other thing that I, also, that I was able to do as a member was when my mother passed away and we had her memorial here. And um, the cost was negligible, you know, to, have, to use the sanctuary. And then Ellen and Reverend Trance, who was our minister at that time, um, did the service just for a, a very small fee. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Thank you, Ken. The Rantlin Bog. <laughs> Preparing an offering message on the opening day of our pledge drive for next year's financial sustainability was a challenge. It's always a bit of a risk to talk about finances too often, yet it's also irresponsible to ignore the importance of understanding how essential our pledges and offerings are to the well-being of our congregation. 
Our pledges of financial commitment ensure that we continue to tend to the spiritual development of our community and to strengthen our capacities to share our values of love, compassion, and justice in the wider community. We're just over three-fourths of the way through this year, a year that will long be remembered as one of recovery and discovery. Recovery from pandemic lockdown, the plague that we've named COVID-19, and discovery of the things that matter most. We are discovering things about ourselves and things about our campus, things that have been there, but perhaps under the surface, but coming forward to grab our full attention now as we continue to find a healthier future. Our mystical side reminds us that our money is energy and the ways that we dedicate our finances and direct those energies says much about the integrity of our intentions. By taking time to gather our offering, we are embracing a ritual that says our giving is an essential part of our fiscal and spiritual well-being. If your offering today is dedicated to your pledge for the current year or to the support of our partner church or one of our other ministries, please be certain to state that in the memo section of your check or ask for one of these envelopes at the greeter station and write on there what it's dedicated to. And while we listen to Lily's beautiful offertory, I invite those in the sanctuary to please come forward now and leave your financial gifts to the congregation and your non-perishable gifts for the Beta Center at the Inland Valley Hope Partners to our altar. It is with deep gratitude for the many, many gifts of this community that the offering will now be given and received. Beautiful. Thank you, Lily. Thanks so much. Hey, I didn't want the folks that are watching online to miss out meeting our mascots for our pledge drive. This is Lucky, Lucky the Moose, and here is Rocky. Yeah. So being a rock, rockin' MVUC is our theme this week, this year. Another element of our weekly worship that we treasure here is the sharing of our concern for people here in the congregation and those of our friends and family, and also for the larger world. Um, 
we have these joy and concerns papers by the front door if you have something that you want read to the congregation. I also have some other concerns, joys and sorrows both, that um, have come to me during the week. But there's one important one here that's coming up a little bit later in our service. Jill Regal is going to be singing. So she wrote a, a joy. She says, I'm very joyful that my good friends, Betsy, Tina, you don't have to stand up, Betsy, <laughs> Tina, Debbie, and Kay, they're all sitting together. They've all come to hear Jill sing. I graduated from Claremont High School with them, right? Yeah, wow. That's wonderful. And as life is, we mix joys with sorrows. I have a difficult announcement here to make. This one comes to us from Jarius. And Jarius, we love you in that room you're locked in over there. <laughs> you know, you can feel it energetically and audibly. Um, but Jarius tells us, he says, my grandmother, Emily Orr, passed away this week on Tuesday night. He says she was 89. So we hold Jarius tenderly and all of his family in their loss. If anyone on Zoom has um, a joy or concern that you'd like to share, you can go ahead and type it in. I've got the chat box open here. I can read it. Um, Oh, I had, I had one listed as a joy of the one-year celebration since my installation. So I, I thank you, Carissa, for mentioning that. Well, yeah, 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 big joy. And uh, one of the gifts at that event was this beautiful stole that was made by um, Maria Wortham. So if she's with us, and if not, it's recorded, Maria, <laughs> that we, uh, I offer my gratitude for that. Also, there's someone missing from us today that I would like us all to send our prayer energies, our, our good thoughts to our uh, board president, Alan Worley. He's not feeling well, so he, he's at home today. Um, and yesterday, there was a 6.8 is what I think it went down to, but a very large earthquake just off the coast of Ecuador yesterday. So we hold those people there um, closely. I have family that's there. Actually, my, my nephew's parents were both born there. So they have a lot of family that they're very concerned about. They're all, they're all doing OK, but terrified because of all the aftershocks. That's a, that's a big quake, as we all know here. <clears throat> and speaking of that loss, i just like the congregation to keep in mind the folks that are um, joining in on the grief group, there's a lot of gratitude that, that we are offering this, this gr uh, small group for people that are struggling. But there's a lot of um, folks that come here on Sundays and they're smiling and all is well with them. But they're, they're really going through a lot. So just let's just keep them in our thoughts. Okay. Also, I have a request from Jimmy, Jimmy Grissom. He asked me to ask you for your prayers for his dad, who's struggling with an addiction to alcohol. So, for all of these intentions, those that are spoken and unspoken, and for all of the compassions that we carry in our hearts, I now light the candle of hope and witness from our chalice flame. <clears throat> And I invite you to join me in this time of prayerful meditation. This is adapted from a recording by Belruth Naparstek on health journeys. See if you can listen to each of her affirmation and maybe repeat it to yourself, either aloud or silently, and breathe it into yourselves. I'll just sit comfortable. I declare my intention that all beings will continue to heal and be whole. 
more and more I understand that this is happening and will continue to happen in time. I invite assistance from friends and loved ones, seen and unseen, to lend me their support, energy, and strength. More and more, I can acknowledge the times that my feelings have troubled me, and without criticism or blame, I sense and accept my feelings, I feel them soften, and I breathe through them. I am better able to change my thoughts toward being kind and gentle to myself first and then others. I can see myself becoming more patient. I am continuing to change and becoming more and more like the person I wish to be. More and more I realize that I am learning to listen to my body and my spirit and to sense what they need. I sense my body as an old friend and I appreciate it, respect it, and take good care of it. I can see and feel radiant sunlight warming my body, sending comfort and solace deep into my heart. I can see and feel a powerful blue-green wave of healing washing over me, removing unwanted debris and taking it out with the tide. I can see and feel a magical blanket of peace and healing surrounding me and comforting me. And more and more I can perceive an invisible assistance that is available to guide me back to my own sense of truth, courage, wisdom, and resourcefulness. I understand that there are treasures to be discovered in the things that have troubled me. I know well that part of me that can never be diminished or destroyed. More and more I know that I can take time to touch a leaf, breathe in the morning air and feel the caress of the ocean breeze on my face. I see that my loving kindness, my mercy, is healing for myself and others. I know that I have things to do, changes to make, gifts to give, and purposes to accomplish. I know that I have all that is needed to do this, and I declare my intention to heal in body, mind, and spirit. And we pray all these things for all beings. May it be so. Amen. And blessed be. Please join me front while you're seated and resting. We'll sing together from our teal hymnal, number 1031, filled with loving kindness.
Well, thank you. Our reading today comes from Mary Oliver. This is a collection of her poems, a book called Devotions that was given to me at my installation. The poem is entitled, Do Stones Feel? Do stones feel? Do they love their life? Or does their patience drown out everything else? When I walk on the beach, I gather a few white ones, dark ones, the multiple colors. Don't worry, I say, I'll bring you back. And I do. Is the tree, as it rises, delighted with its many branches, each one like a poem? Are the clouds glad to unburden their bundles of rain? Most of the world says, no, no, it's not possible. But I refuse to think to such a conclusion. Too terrible it would be to be wrong. When the pledge team gathered to choose a theme for this year's drive a few weeks ago, I was encouraged by the energies and ideas that began popping in the administrator's office while they were sitting together brainstorming their ideas. I wasn't immediately certain how I might best be a supportive team player and unsure about writing a Sunday service message about the theme that they settled on. But it was refreshing to see this level of excitement returning after several years of pandemic pledge drives that Bob and I, when Bob was treasurer and we tried to do a pledge drive I, during COVID, it, <laughs> who knew? <sighs> when they told me that they had settled on rock as their theme, and we have Rocky here as our, our, one of our mascots, I had um, all those visions of Dwayne Johnson <laughs> as Maui in the Disney movie Mo Moana, and also in that peach Oscar tuxedo flashing before my eyes. <laughs> yeah. And all I could hear was that 1991 Chevy advertising campaign that used the Bob Seeger song from 1986, Like a Rock. <laughs> It's part of the weekly conversation that many ministers have with the unseen realms. And I was asking, OK, what is the theme? And what message is needed most? And what are the words that will touch these beloved ones in ways to reach those hard to reach itchy spots that maybe unconsciously are seeking to be touched and encouraged? But still, I, all I could hear was Bob Seeger. So, okay, I look at the lyrics. <laughs> like a rock, I was strong as I could be. Like a rock, nothing ever got to me. Like a rock, I was something to see. Like a rock, and I stood arrow straight, unencumbered by the weight of all these hustlers and their schemes. Like a rock. I stood proud, I stood tall, high above it all. I still believed in all my dreams, like a rock. Yeah, that's us. So with the new electric powered Chevy truck in my vision, and without Bob Seeger's permission, I wrote a new verse for us. Like a rock, we've got purpose, plan, and pledge, like a rock. We can soar from Baldi's edge like a rock, because our future is cutting edge like a rock. Today, we look at our purpose, plan, and pledge and stand a bit stronger. First, our purpose. While we begin to work together with our leadership development team to reorganize our congregation, in order to blossom to the best identity that we can for today's ever-changing world. We hold and share the vision of our future as purposeful, sustainable, viable, and valuable to the enhancement of our lives and the lives of those who will choose to join us by making our congregation their spiritual home. 
in the future. Just as the Article 2 of the UUA's bylaws describe the principles and purposes of our Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations, Article 2 of our Congregational Bylaws tell us that the purpose of this congregation shall be to cultivate the ideals of liberal religion, to nurture those ideals in our own neighborhood, and to encourage their growth in the larger world. Monta Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation affirms the principles and purposes of Unitarian Universalism as adopted by the UUA. This congregation is not organized for the private gain of any person and shall be a nonprofit, tax exempt religious organization under the laws of the state of California. We are Unitarian Universalists a congregation of thinkers and doers from many faiths who each bring our individual gifts to enliven and support this community in order to maintain a thriving presence of Unitarian Universalism in this three county foothill region of Southern California. Our purpose is to grow intellectually and spiritually as individuals and community as we look forward to living in our living out our collective hopes and dreams. What we'll be doing with the guidance of leadership development is to put together our plan that we all have ownership of, or how best we can do that. Second is that plan. In order to begin to create our plan, we hope to hear everyone's voice. There's one more focus group, as David told us about, being added to the schedule in order to ensure that everyone has had an opportunity to contribute and enhance the outcome of these listening circles that we've been holding. Our last scheduled focus group will be held next week after service, and it'll be open for those to join online, here in the sanctuary, in person. But these focus groups have already brought out some really encouraging information that'll be combined with the voices of this final group and then shared with the congregation at a meeting in April. Hearing the hearts of each and every member is essential to the formation of the plan that we will co-create to reform our congregation in a more sustainable format that will allow a team approach to our governance and our visioning of the future. Everyone is invited to participate in this final group, even if you've attended one of the others. Sometimes our best ideas are formulated after we've thought more on things. So please come back if you choose to do that. Planning for our future is an ongoing and essential step to ensure that we're keeping up with and ahead of the changes that are like a tsunami that are roaring toward most churches and spiritual communities in the world today. And how fortunate is it that we have the leadership that we do that is courageously looking ahead and taking seriously our need to always be alert to changes and transformations that are necessary in a world where troubles come uninvited and often snowball without being provoked. Our plan for revision and restructuring is a timely and preemptive step toward our best future, coming at a time when the leadership of our association is in the midst of very similar realignment. But working on this plan together may be one of the most important tasks that we will complete this decade. And we can stand confident that we're in tune with what we most need to accomplish and we can stand knowing that we heeded the warnings of both Ben Franklin and Winston Churchill, who say that those who fail to plan are planning to fail. But thirdly, our pledge to make the plans that we'll co-create come alive, we will rely on the generous support of our members and friends. Pledges of all sizes are needed to help us plan for our programs, our ministries, our small groups, our activities in the facility care to serve this congregation and also help us 
as we pledge to serve our community. We're all invited to make a financial pledge that you're comfortable with, stretched by that will. Oh, forgive me, let me reread that. We're all invited to make a financial pledge that you are comfortably stretched by. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, let me say that again. We're all invited <laughs> to submit our annual pledge and membership renewal in an amount that you're comfortably stretched by. So we do ask for a little stretch in there. But that will strengthen and support our budget for the upcoming fiscal year. I close with this blessing from John O'Donohue. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so, may a slow wind work these words of love around you like an invisible cloak to mind your life. May it be so. Blessed be and amen. Anne, if you would come forward and we will extinguish the chalice. If everyone will recite with me the words of our benediction in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but the sparks within us remain alight. We are one, and from every window our light shines. Thank you. Everyone is invited to stay for refreshments and conversation after we enjoy Lily's postlude.